Greetings. I'm Dr. Jason Ozuko from SUNY Geneseo, and today I'd like to introduce you to a new tool for PsychoPy that I've developed called the PsychoPy Routine Viewer. This is a Windows-based tool that will allow you to hopefully make some better slides, or at least make slides more easily uh, in PsychoPy. So what do I mean? Well, if you've spent any time using PsychoPy, you probably already know that the way PsychoPy deals with routines is that it allows you to add components to those routines and it shows you those components on a timeline. So for instance, here's a text object on a routine. You can have images and all sorts of other things. Now, if you want to change how this text object looks, you have to click into its properties. You have to type in some text. You have to figure out screen coordinates that you'd like to display this at. So for instance, 0, 0 would be the center of the screen. Um, and if you want to affect any other aspects of, it, of its appearance, you have to go into the properties here. Similarly with uh, you know, images and other things, you have to come in here and manually uh, affect their layout with screen coordinates. Now, the benefit of doing it this way is that screen coordinates are incredibly precise, so you know exactly where you're putting things. Um, and another reason why I believe PsychoPy um, uses this technique rather than showing you all your images and texts on the screen um, and allowing you to see how it will look is that it allows you to actually enter in uh, variable names instead of hard-coded positions. So we could have a fruit position variable here and this would mean when the script runs, uh, whatever value this variable is, that's what where the, the image would be positioned on the screen. And now this is very powerful and very uh, a very useful feature of PsychoPy that I use all the time. However, um, it does mean that once you put a variable in as a position or a size, there would be no way to write a viewer that could properly preview how this thing would look. You just have to run your experiment and see it. And so traditionally when you're developing uh, routines in PsychoPy, you'll put in the best coordinates and the best sizes that you think should work. Then you'll just run your experiment, see how it looks. Uh, and then you'll go back and make adjustments and run your experiment and so on. Um, but this is a lot of back and forth. And so for my own use, um, I actually developed a tool that uh, makes it easier to see your slides. And essentially this allows you to see your slides as if you were looking at a PowerPoint slide and click and drag things around and resize them and then save it and have it update your PsychoPy script so that you don't have to go in and manually figure out all the coordinates that will make things look best. So let's take a look at this program. This is a PsychoPy routine viewer. There's uh, a link in the description down below to download it if you'd like. Uh, this is a free program that I've developed, so you're, you're welcome to start using it right away to build experiments. And when you first open this ex uh, the routine viewer, it will ask you to basically open a PsychoPy file. So if we come in here, let's today we're going to be working with the slot experiment that I was showing you just a moment ago in PsychoPy. So I'm going to go ahead and select that PsychoPy experiment and open it. And what you'll notice is that... Uh, immediately we can see the very first slide. And now I've actually been playing around with this uh, a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna come over here and just uh, adjust a few of these parameters down a bit. And I'm gonna save this. And once you've made changes to your PsychoPy script, by the way, if you come back to your routine viewer, they won't be there immediately. You actually have to uh, select open and open uh, a new file. And so here we go. Here's my base uh, welcome screen. Now to open a new file, um, you'll be prompted when you first start the program to open a file. You can also press escape at any point and then there'll be the option to open so you can reload a file that way. You can also save or save as if you've made changes to your experiment. We'll see that in just a minute. Um, shortcut keys, by the way, are control O to open, control S to save, control A to save as. Um, okay, so here is my first welcome screen. So we're looking at this routine right now. And what the PsychoPy routine viewer will do is it will extract any visible objects that it knows how to decode and it will show them. So in this case, there's just uh, the text component. The welcome keys are still there and the PsychoPy routine viewer isn't gonna mess around with any of that code. So it won't interfere with um, or cause problems for any of your PsychoPy scripts, um, at least as far as version 22.2.4. Now, one of the nice things is this is just like PowerPoint. You can edit your text live and see how it will look. So welcome, happy people, we could say. 
Um, I just, by the way, pressed L there when I was typing in people. And when you press L, you turn on uh, lines, which will allow you to position different objects uh, next to each other. So for instance, if we had, uh, so let's say, let's save this, by the way. I'm going to save this right now. So I did Control S there. If I come back into PsychoPy, um, nothing here has updated because I first have to open this experiment and reload it. So I'm going to do that. And now I've got the updated version that I saved over here. I'm going to now add a second text object to the welcome screen. And we will call this just text2. And I'll leave it as just a one second text. That's fine. If you come back to the routine viewer, again, notice you don't have a second text here yet. It's because you have to save your file in PsychoPy and then you have to reopen it over here. So one of the key things um, about uh, using the PsychoPy routine viewer is if you make changes here, you have to save it and then you have to reopen it over here. And if you make changes here, you have to save it and then you have to reopen it over here. So save, open, save, open. That's how you sort of get the updates from the routine viewer over to PsychoPy and, and vice versa. But anyway, we've added a second text component here. Notice when I click the text component, it tells me I've got a text component and what its name is. So we can see this is text welcome and this is text two. So it allows you to easily see if you have a lot of images or texts on the screen. You may not know which one you're moving around or editing. This will tell you. You can use the lines to line things up precisely if you want. You can also press the G button at any point to bring on a grid and now things will snap to the grid. And so you can use this also if you want to line things up. Um, one thing you can't do with uh, the text uh, components in the routine viewers, change the text size. Notice though it is displaying proper differences in text size. So um, the text size for this welcome is actually set at 10% uh, or 0.1. Um, the text size for text two is actually set at 0 0.05. If we change this, so if we change this to 10% and then we save it, we can come back to our routine viewer here. We can open it up and then you'll see that now the text is being displayed uh, larger. So the routine viewer will detect how big you want your text components to be and it will show them at the right size. Um, but it isn't going to uh, allow you to edit the text size dynamically in the viewer itself. Um, a few other things to note is that the, this text uh, component here only displays on the screen for one second. Um, there's no way to sort of represent that currently in the routine viewer, so it will just show up. Um, and you'll have to know that, oh, this is only going to be on the screen for one second. Um, so the text uh, or the, the routine viewer is just going to show everything it detects. Even if this text too didn't appear for, uh, let's say, didn't come on the screen until 10 seconds into the experiment, if we save it as is right now and then we open it back up, you'll see that there's really nothing marking uh, when it appears and when it goes away. So again, you'll sort of have to know when things appear. It, it doesn't represent time. Um, however, you can edit all of your routines. So we've just been messing around on the welcome screen. Let's look at some of these other routines in here. So the fruit trial or the feedback trial. How do you get to these other routines in the routine viewer? Well, it's very simple. Um, you can press plus or minus on the numpad uh, of your keyboard and this will move things back and forth. So I'm just hitting plus and minus right now. You can use the arrow keys, so right or left. You can also um, press the Z or Z key at any time to bring up a full list of all your routines and you can simply click through them. And when you're done, you can just click away or you can press um, escape to uh, make the menu go away. Um, if you have more routines than will fit on the list, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down. And so you can find whatever routine you want to edit and click on it. Now here's one where we're displaying an image. Notice that over here, the image um, I am specifying in PsychoPy which image to display and the routine viewer detects that and it will preview the image just like I'll see it in PsychoPy. So that's quite handy. Also for images, you can resize these. The size of the uh, text components that we were looking at before is just determined by the text you write in there. But the size of images can be controlled and so you can actually scale your images and see how they will look. Um, the routine viewer will detect text objects, images, uh, buttons, 
uh, polygons, and scales right now. And I'll show you all of those today. Uh, and most of those can be uh, resized. If you come to uh, a routine where you have an image, and maybe this image, so for instance, this is the feedback slide. Maybe this image is set by the script, or maybe there's a variable name in here, you know, feedback image, something like that. The routine viewer isn't going to know what to show, so it's just going to say missing image. This doesn't mean your experiment is broken or that it won't work. It's just saying that for as far as the routine viewer is concerned, it doesn't know what preview to put in there. So it's just going to say missing image uh, to let you know that there is an image there. It just doesn't know what it's supposed to be. Now let's just add a few more things to our welcome slide here. Let's take a look at, um, let's see here, polygons. So we'll add a polygon shape and let's add a button and let's add a scale and we'll see how those all um, appear. Now buttons by default um, have no size and so I'll show you what happens if you put a button that has no size. If you put a size it will just show up like an image like we just saw and it will be scaled and positioned according to how you entered it. But if you happen to forget a size what will it look like? So let's just do that and let's add a slider scale. So we will say slider welcome and how about can range from thank you to no thank you sir. Um, and there are extra components. So I'll save this over here, come back to the routine viewer and then I'm going to press control O to open and I'm going to select the file that I just saved and you'll see that we've got some new things here. This is our shape, by the way, and I, I can tell you after I've selected it, it says uh, polygon component, polygon shape. Um, all shapes will be displayed as rectangles, regardless of whether you've got a triangle or circle or whatever. Again, this is just to help you broadly position things. This isn't necessarily going to 100% show up exactly as it will when you run PsychoPy, but it, it is very handy, I find at least, to be able to position things dynamically like this. Um, one other thing just to mention is that um, frequently polygon shapes are colored in some color. So for instance, maybe you have a red fill um, and you can even do this with text. Maybe your text is, uh, you know, blue or something like that. So if we save that script and come back to uh, our viewer here and we reopen it, you will see that it will color things according to how they're supposed to be colored. So here's our red shape and our blue text. The one limitation with the routine viewer is it can't do really exotic colors. And I think it just defaults to gray or, or white when it gets a really exotic color. So if you come in, you know, PsychoPy has all sorts of uh, really elaborate colors like Blanche Dalmond or, or Blanched Almond. Wow, I read that incorrectly. Cornflower Blue, Dark Goldenrod. Um, dark goldenrod is not a color that I've added to the viewer. So if you did have this sort of elaborate color, it uh, wouldn't necessarily uh, show up correctly. Um, so if you type dark goldenrod, uh, that wouldn't show up correctly. However, if you did just use the um, parameters that PsychoPy gave you, so for blanched almond, it's 1.834 and 0 0.6078. If we do that, then the routine viewer actually um, will detect the proper colors. You can see there's our lovely blanched almond color. So color names, it has the basics, but if you add in actual color, you know, RGB values, it will show whatever. So uh, the routine viewer is, is pretty flexible like that. Um, so there's our shape. Here's our text. Notice there's this little dot here that says click here. This is our button, by the way. We forgot to assign it a shape. The routine viewer will still show it. It'll show up as the tiniest green dot, but you can come in here and resize it. And by default, it's given it a black background. But if we switch slides and come back, you'll see that now that it actually has a shape, it's got its gray background. And again, uh, buttons can have uh, different colored backgrounds, so you can go ahead and put whatever color you'd like in, and as long as the routine viewer can understand the color, it's not too exotic, or you've given it RGB values, it'll show up in the right color. Um, here's our slider, by the way. So uh, once again, you can resize it. You can see uh, you know, the responses, what they will look like on the screen, so it'll give you a sense of what the slide is going to look like. So you can go ahead and position everything and get everything lining up 
uh, exactly the way you want it. Um, and you can make the most beautiful slides. Once you've made uh, a slide you're happy with, just save it. Uh, so you can either click save or save as. I'll just go to save. And just to quickly show you, um, the routine viewer is act actually errs on the side of caution when it's overwriting files. So even when you click save, if we click save right here, the file saves. And notice that this plus 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 file was just created. This is a version of the PsychoPy experiment before we overwrote it. And so if you do use the routine viewer and you're saving a lot, you'll see a lot of these plus, 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 plus files. You can erase them if you want. Um, they're not, it's not going to hurt anything. They're not uh, dependencies for anything. But what they are are backups. So that if at some point you save something in the routine viewer and something happened to go wrong, you know, I, I've tested this a lot. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but maybe it screwed up your PsychoPy uh, script somehow. You've got all these pluses and you can just go back to an earlier version um, and uh, recover it from there. So these are basically a safe, a, an extra cautious safety net on my part because, you know, I really don't want to take any chances with your experiments and so I'm not going to. So anytime you save a file, if that file already exists, it will uh, rename that file with a plus um, and then it will uh, overwrite the file. But it will leave that backup as a plus file for you. So the pluses are backups. And one last thing to mention, too, is that if you've been paying attention on this slide, uh, the routine viewer will show a green box around interactive objects like buttons and uh, sliders and a red box around non-interactive items, so uh, images, uh, text components, and uh, shapes. And this is just purely aesthetics, um, but if you do have a lot of components on a slide, it will help you quickly glance at a slide and see what is a button and what is text so you don't confuse them, or what is a button and what is an image or a polygon and so on. So green, buttons or sliders, red for the rest. Okay, just a couple other limitations to mention. Like PsychoPy itself, the routine viewer can't decode your variables. So if the position of this shape, for instance, is set by a shape position variable of some kind, whatever the name is, uh, the routine viewer won't know where to put it, and uh, it just defaults to the center of the screen. So if you do have a bunch of objects that are positioned according to variables, uh, that's how the routine viewer will deal with them. Just because you see the object in the center of the screen doesn't mean that's where it's going to be. Uh, it just means that Psychopod, the, the routine viewer doesn't know where to put it, so that's where it has put it. Um, I would definitely recommend, though, if you are going to use the routine viewer to set up your slides, that you do all the setup first before you start making your experiment so complex you're adding in variable names just to be on the safe side and just because i think the routine viewer works best as an initial setup tool to help get you all the pieces where you want it before you start making your experiments um, too sophisticated another thing to keep in mind is that the routine viewer is designed assuming that the units that you are using are the screen height um, so that, those are all the units that are being computed in the routine viewer. If you use different units like norm or picks or degrees or whatever, the routine viewer will still try to show things and try to save things, but it's going to get everything incorrect. So uh, don't use it if you're not using uh, height. Height is the basic default unit the PsychoPy uses. So if you didn't know that this was something you could change, then you're using the right units already. So your experiments will be compatible. Um, also, as you uh, can see, and as I pointed out, I'm using PsychoPy version 2022.2.4. Uh, I can guarantee it's uh, this routine viewer has been tested and works with this version. If they come out with a radical new version soon, um, I, I, I can't guarantee until I have a, t a chance to test it that it's going to be compatible. But as of today, it's fully compatible and it works. So that's it. As I say, the download link is in the description below. So if you'd like to download the tool and start using it, have at it, uh, and I hope it helps you build uh, better uh, and more interesting uh, PsychoPy slides. Good luck with your research, everybody. And by the way, if you or your lab are in need of PsychoPy help, I do offer professional consulting services, from fixing bugs or getting experiments working online to building entire experiments from scratch. If it's PsychoPy, I can help. My contact info and rates can be found in the description of this video.